Man, if this dude had any type of power. That shot right there. Definitely was not nervous. Um, which, was, which I was worried about. Like, I was worried. Like, always remember, especially my beginner fighters, like, the nerves is good. I used to be scared of the nerves. But what I realized is that you, you need those nerves. Um, they keep you sharp. If you are completely not nervous, I had a fight versus Anthony Johns way back in the day, and I was not nervous, and won one of my worst performances. All right, fight about to start. Let's see what we got. All right. So it started out with a nice, strong jab. The, the good thing about that jab was even though it was strong, I wasn't, like, overshooting it. Um, one thing I definitely noticed that I wanted to do a better job at was the positioning of the lead hand. Let's stop it right there, right? So, do a jab to the body, and obviously I've watched this fight so many times, so the thing was, it was a good, solid jab to the body. The, the mistake that I was making was that I was landing it so much and so effectively that I didn't faint enough off of it to be able to come up top with something. So, I'm definitely going to take note of that um, as something to work on going forward in the future, right? So, I jab to the body, faint a little bit more if I if I realize that I'm landing it clean a lot but also if I'm landing that jab to the body um he tried to counter with the right hand a few times but it wasn't nothing crazy so I could have definitely jabbed to the body jab back with a jab up top and that would have gave me the right hand and the hook probably could have made that right hand a lot more effective later on in the fight See, now also right there, and it's, and it's happened a few times, is I was carrying my, my lead hand really low. And I, fig I figured out my distance pretty early. So I said, if I know the distance and I wasn't getting hit with that overhand right or whatever right hand he was trying to throw, so it is not necessarily a problem. But with better opposition that can time me or maybe even willing to take a little more risk than this guy, that could be a huge issue. Because the thing was, I was you know, pulling back and taking that step back with the lead hand low, but I wasn't necessarily Philly shelling. It was in the position, but I wasn't tucking the chin and bringing that shoulder up to make it effective enough that if I really needed to roll off of a shot, that I could do it. Mm. Good shot. Mm, come back up with the hook. So, so right there. So, I tried the overhand right a few times. One time when I tried it, um, I missed. Kinda was off balance, stumbled a little bit. He went over to, started moving to his left. I went ahead and tried to throw the overhand right again, and I kind of smothered myself. I think we ended up butting heads because I led with the head, and then I tried it again, and I was out of distance. I think that problem, what was happening with that was even though the jab to the body can be a range finder, I never really established the jab to the head at this point, and if I would have not been throwing so many hard jabs and maybe threw a little bit more jabs that was just for range finding rather than a real snappy hard jab, it would have made it possibly a lot easier to find the range on that. That overhand right even though throwing it with the jab to the body or fainting to the body to get them to drop the hands and then throw that loop in on that overhand right probably could have allowed it to land more it doesn't matter about landing it if you can't find the range if you can't find the range on it you'll never land it Okay, that time I, I feel like I felt I found the range on that one. I couldn't see because of the ref of how clean I landed it, but um, I know I threw it really hard. So I, I, I stayed calm 
pause it. So I stayed calm in that situation because going into the fight, I think that was the one thing when I was in the back room that I told myself the most was if I hurt this guy, do not lose control. That's the thing we see with a lot of fighters very early in their career. They want the knockout so bad. And we even see it with higher, higher level pros. They hurt somebody. They feel like they could close the show. They want the knockout really bad or they want to put on a spectacular performance. And what ends up happening is they go and they rush the knockout rather than set it up. One thing was when I landed that right hand, even though he stumbled, it was all balanced. He didn't get knocked down and he visibly to me did not look hurt. So my first thing was, and I, and I want to tell, especially if you're a beginner fighter, you get to a neutral corner. You take a glance at that fighter to see what he looks like, but turn to your corner, turn to your corner, look and see what instructions that they are going to give you because they'll be able to really quickly in that 10 count that the referee is given, give you instructions to let you know what you can do to get that stoppage. If you should stay calm, if he's really hurt and that will help you progress or figure out what you're going to do from that point forward in the fight. So you can see here, I, I, I'm starting to loosen up a little bit and now I'm starting to have a little fun. It was six years since I had been in the ring, so I knew I was definitely going to be rusty, but I mean, I had like one or two really good sparring sessions with some, some good people that I, was, I wasn't necessarily worried about this guy. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still pros, no headgear, I gotta respect it. So I wanna stop again, cause this is, a, this is a thing right here. I threw a lot of single right hands and my corner actually ends up telling me, I think they was telling me that when I was in the neutral corner, it was double up the right hand, right? But also what I could have done was, cause I was landing a lot of right hands and the firepower that was coming back from him in terms of his right hand was nothing crazy or he wasn't throwing it. I could have been throwing right hand left hook or possibly to up the right upper cut and the left hook in this situation where he's against the corner. Trying to put my punches together and put combinations together is something that I definitely have to work on. It's, it's always been something in my career that I needed work on, but it definitely showed in this fight. And I'm sorry, stop it again, but I noticed that in the fight, um, I was trying to land some really good body shots and I tried to make sure that I committed to the body, but I was falling short with the body shots. Instead of me actually landing the shot around and trying to get it around the elbow or shoot it up the middle and split the guard to hit the solar plex. I kind of was throwing the shot on his arm or at his elbow and that wasn't intentional. Uh, my aim was just off. So I'm gonna go back to this really quick because this is a key moment. Uh, so right here, lead hand low not necessarily in the Philly shell position. I get hit with a right hand, right? Being reckless. Now, the thing was that shot that I threw that right up because of whatever I was throwing, I could have thrown that from the high guard and I would have protected myself a lot better. Now, given that if this guy had a little more power was maybe a little sharper, um, a little bit better competition, that could have been a shot that really hurt me. Good thing it didn't, but that was just me, you know, being, being a little bit sloppy. So it, it's something I definitely got to be aware of because like I said, if I look at any of my sparrings, I have some of that similar issue where I'm trying to slip or I'm being a little bit lazy with the way that I control my lead hand. All right, starting to work a little bit better from the high guard. See there, yeah, I shouldn't, I definitely shouldn't have stepped back right there. So hey, I was trying to do what my corner was telling me to do, which was like d double up that lead hand. They wanted me to like go around like a, a right hook to the body and then loop it up the middle and come back with the left hook. But I couldn't figure out the distance. And I, and I think also that was because I was trying to throw the shot so hard to hurt and didn't allow it to flow. And I very possibly could have just set that up a lot better by maybe going hard shot, soft shot, hard shot. It, I would have been able to find the range better. All right, so now we come back out. Definitely trying to make sure I go back to establishing the jab. This time it's more of a flicker. Starting to do the split jab. Some lead right. Speed, not as much power. Mm. See, now I was starting to put my punches together a little bit better, but even, even here, see, that lead hand. So one thing, note, I have to work on 
working behind the Philly shell if I'm gonna do that, or I'm gonna have to focus on keeping that hand up. Now, obviously I can tell at this point I was in control, but I did get hit with some stuff or maybe a headbutt, and that made me realize like work, work from the high guard. And obviously this is the end, of, this is the end of the fight. Uh, overall, it was it was it was a good it was a good performance. I mean, I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I fought the best person in the world, but I mean I still got it and then did it. So all right, so now let me bring this down. So now what I'm gonna talk to you guys about is how do I game plan from this point forward, right? So when I look at this fight, and this is something that I definitely feel like each person who's a fighter that's watching this, so even a coach should do. I mean, obviously for this fight, if you did not know, I trained myself for this fight. I did have Adam Zayez, uh, who was helping me out the last two weeks or so, um, giving me some pad work. He was the one who wrapped my hands in the back, as well as, you know, warmed me up to get me ready to go out. Um, but majority of the camp, I trained myself. I went and drove, contacted other coaches that I knew. I went and got sparring uh, by myself. And then I had the coaches from the other corners, like give me water or whatever the case may be. Most of it was me recording myself in the gym while I, you know, work on techniques, look and see things. Not everyone can do that because it, it takes a certain level of IQ. But like I said in the previous video, which I'll link up here, I also had people that I sent footage to, coaches that I respected that was able to send me feedback back that I could go ahead and work on, record it, send it back to him so this is what every coach should do get your fighter after a fight and make sure you review their fight even review their sparrings with them yeah it's good to watch other fighters some of the greats and things of that nature but there's nothing like watching yourself if you want to try and improve a bad habit watch yourself do it over and over and i promise you it will give you conviction like no other to go ahead and fix that now every coach should go over the footage with the fighters but at the end of the day it doesn't always happen so if you are in a situation like that or maybe you don't have a coach and you're trying to learn yourself i have started a community that i do go over footage with people um whether it's me reviewing it and then sending them the feedback back or doing it on a live stream call which i hold every week we do do that and it is something that i feel like can benefit anybody out there who doesn't necessarily have a coach that is doing this with them and as well as you'll get access to a bunch of other resources that can help you in your boxing career if you would like to sign up for that the link will be in the description it is only ten dollars a month now let's get back to the video so now let's bring up this list of things that I really want to work on right so one thing was making sure that once I'm jabbing to the body a few times I have to do something after I was landing that jab to the body too much and too effectively to not capitalize on it which means that I could have started throwing feints or or do change level feints that made it look like I was going to throw that jab to the body and then come back up top so I could land something more effective up top another thing was really carrying that lead the lead hand was extremely low but I was doing nothing with it it wasn't like I was trying to show the roll and then counter with the right hand or the upper cut it really was a situation where i don't think i had control over it was just such a bad habit and the moment got the best of me and i didn't i didn't capitalize on the opportunities that existed because i would have to bring that hand all the way up um and also there was a few times i got hit with a few shots which didn't necessarily hurt me but they still landed and with better opposition that could have been a problem the next thing is just placement of my body shot so what i'm going to do is i have a bag at my gym that it's it's a blue bag it have these white like dots on them and it's more like a wrecking ball uh, type of bag so it's easier to throw the body shot i'm gonna aim for those different white spots on the bag to work on my placement and making sure i'm hitting them if, if you do not have a bag like that that have those spots on them then what you could do is just get pieces of tape and stick those in two separate or three separate spots that you would place your body shot so you could try and work on accuracy and the thing is start off really slow placing the shots really good make sure you're landing with the knuckles and then start to really challenge picking up the speed or even changing the angles and still trying to land in those spots because doing that when you start to pick up the speed it allow you to see your area's opportunity it's a lot easier to do stuff when it's slowed down or when you're taking your time but you know build the technique first and then start to pick up the speed on it um i think one of the last things for me that i really really would want to take from this fight and i would want to carry over and work on is my combination punches yeah towards the end i was able to walk them down and put some punches together that really was like from the head and the body but really focus on the body but there were a lot of times in that fight where i was just on one shot at a time and i was landing 
landing it or maybe i'll get close enough to land it but i didn't capitalize by putting those combinations together and that is something i definitely can do going forward so you'll start seeing some some videos on uh, my instagram as well as like anything that i do training vlog wise where you'll see me implementing some of those things so definitely let me know in the comments if you would like to see me slowly start to work on these things and maybe even see you know some of the sparring of me you know working on my defense or how i'm gonna work on keeping that hand up and minimize that uh definitely let me know or also let me know if you would like me to film study someone else and show you exactly how do i review film how i use certain fighters or what do i look for in certain films that can help me and my style of fight and be better and then you can possibly take some of those tips over and it can help you be better so again thank you guys for sticking around this long and if you feel like you have gotten some type of value from this or if you have questions definitely comment down below and i will answer them but if you have gotten value definitely make sure that you like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notifications for whenever i post a new video as usual keep working on your techniques working on your fundamentals it's your boy kenya i'm out